What's up, poor fam? You know what time it is. Let's get into, into this. this. All right. What's up, everybody? What's going on, horror fam? We are you back know, at it again. We are. We are. We're always at it over here. Sometimes. We're at each other's throats most so, of the time. <laughs> I say sometimes. Um, so sometimes. what's up, horror fam? We're back at it again, and tonight we got a very special episode for us. We've been wanting to dig into this, and... Through our connections, we found someone that was perfect for the episode. So, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's going to be really cool, and we're so glad that uh, that she came in to join us on this one because she probably knows way more about this than most people on the planet. Um, and we're going to introduce you here to Miss Jessica Jones. Jessica, how are you? Hey, y'all, I'm doing good. Doing great. Good, I'm good. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Yeah, so uh, while we uh, got Don't the, let uh, Ryan offend you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> while we got people still listening, yeah. why don't you let everybody know where they can find you? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, everybody can find me uh, at my website, thecryptedhuntress.com. Uh, I, I have a show on uh, the weekends. I'm the weekend host at Spaced Out Radio. Uh, I have a show called Off the Trails. It airs Saturday and Sunday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern. Also, I have a show with Texas Front Porch, and uh, it's about remote viewing, what we're going to be talking about tonight. Nice. That's Friday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern. Awesome. Nice. Awesome. So you guys need to go check it out, show your sport and everything. Yeah, you know. absolutely. Uh, I've watched several of her shows. Like, fantastic. Fantastic yeah, topics, and she always has awesome guests on there, and we're very guests. fortunate to have her. <laughs> Thank yes. you. Yeah, for sure, for so, sure. Yeah, so we are really excited, you know. Uh, it's cool that we talk about this sometimes, you know, but we meet a lot of cool people through this, doing podcasts and stuff, and that's what's really cool, as much as, like I told you, we kind of talked about it on the other, as much as I don't like the internet, <laughs> it allows us to, uh, you know, meet people that we probably would never met, you know, so um, it's really cool, and we just so happened to run into you when we were on DA's show. Shout out DA Roberts. Yes. Our yeah. man. Thank but uh, we met you over there, and... Yeah, I was like, dude, we've got to get her on for this, you know, so well, I'm pretty excited. This stuff is really cool, and it leads actually into a bunch of different things. Uh, and it was funny. We just asked her if she'd like to be on the show, and, and she agreed, and I'm like, <laughs> God, she has no idea what she's in for. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can handle it. All right, all right. Good, 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 good. Yeah. Good. Good. No, it's you see good. my show, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was telling you. Yeah, we're yeah. we we see them. Yeah. You're good. But I um, mean, I'm, I'm a Bigfoot field researcher, so I mean, you got to be a little crazy first yeah. of all. Yeah, absolutely. Be a little crazy. So absolutely, yeah. we're all a little crazy in our own ways. We're all a little bit. That's the way I look at it. But yeah, so tonight we're going to be talking about we're going to be talking mainly about remote viewing and things like that. But we have some other things that we're going to get into that involve that. You know. Um, I know, I know you kind of said you only seen like the first season of Stranger Things, but like that's like a heart. That's you know that's what it's yeah. all about. It's, yeah, absolutely. It's actually really really good. I, yeah, and it get, it gets better as it goes along. Um, so maybe we shouldn't ruin that for her. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, and we're not going to. We're not. We're not here to talk about Stranger Things. Yes. <laughs> the way this all came about was. Uh, watching some videos and there was a lot of conspiracy theories going on about stranger things and i started digging into it okay why are these people talking about this what are they talking about and it led me down a rabbit hole of oh my god our government is crazy i've been telling you that for years uh, you've been telling me i'm crazy so uh <laughs> so it, it, it's funny there there's several different things at play here and you know, one of the big, big ones, and most people should know that when the the guys that created Stranger Things, when they first started that series, mm -hmm. their intention was to call it Montauk. Yes. Um, yeah. And they decided against that because of marketing and different things. But a lot of this has to do with the Montauk project. Yes. Um but to get into all of that, we've got to go back quite a few years. Um, and I, I guess I'm just going to run with this here. Look at you. Uh, Run so away. You, can, you guys will catch me because I'm fat. I can't run very fast. Um, <laughs> but, so uh, uh, where, the, where this all started from 
was one, like I told you, the government's crazy. Uh, but back in the summer of 1943 mm-hmm. is where this all began. Uh, and it began with a story that a lot of a lot of you people have probably heard about, and that's the Philadelphia experiment. Yes, yes. So, so, and I it's funny because I, <laughs> I told JT I watched. There's a movie called the Philadelphia Experiment. I don't know if you've seen it. Yeah, well, Michael Perrier. Yeah, and, it's actually, I mean, uh, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. Compared to what movies are now, right? You know, some right. of the graphics are, but. Uh, you know, I've liked him ever since I've seen him in one of my favorite movies ever. This is all a little sideline, but uh, um, Eddie and the Cruisers. Oh, yeah. I yeah, love that movie. Film. He's in it. Great but anyways, film. so um, before we get any deeper into this, let everybody, if you don't mind, let them know what you do and why we okay. want to bring you on for this particular. That way they kind of know who's on here with us. So. Okay. Well, you guys... Uh, are probably more interested in my remote viewing skills, okay, because I am trained in remote viewing. Uh, I, I started off as a Bigfoot field researcher. I'm on several different teams uh, down here in the south, and, uh, and one of my teams, my main team, Enigma Research Group, the head of my team is an amazing remote viewer, and uh, when we were out in the field having more than Bigfoot activity, we were having UFOs flying around and ET contact and uh, portals opening up and all sorts of weird stuff. He decided that it was time to teach the entire team remote viewing so that we can look into all these weird events and all the high strangeness out in the field. So we have an entire team full of remote viewers now. We've been training for years. And, uh, and so I even have a show about it now where I look into paranormal attacks and stuff. So uh, yeah, but, but if you guys want me to explain what remote viewing is briefly, I can do that. Absolutely. Yeah, if you want to. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, well, a lot of people may have heard about remote viewing through uh, the military and our government. Uh, back during the Cold War, uh, Russia had psychic spies. Okay, and so, of course, America was like, well, we need to have psychic spies. So, so basically, it's psychic spying in a way, okay? But it's, it, what it is is locating a target um, using your, for lack of a better term, your psychic abilities. Okay, uh, a lot. Most of my targets are blind. I am given a set of eight numbers, and I have no idea what those numbers are. And I, I do something called coordinate remote viewing. Those are my coordinates. I sit down with a, a pen and some paper, and uh, I write those numbers down, and I chart out my graphs, and I just uh, start remote viewing. And uh, just from those eight numbers, and uh, I am able to locate whatever my target is. Uh, after, uh, you know, five, six, seven pages of paper, and uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, you just start you just start writing down every single thing that comes into your your mind. Anything you smell, you taste, you touch, you can feel it, you can hear it. You write all that sensory data down, and uh, and by the end, I mean, I even hear song lyrics rap lyrics and stuff i mean that's whatever crazy. it is yeah i write it down and um by the end of that session i have i have, have that target figured out wow that's yeah. cool that's awesome that's cool that's that awesome. is very cool you know and it's funny so i uh, was kind of getting off the subject this reminds me a lot of uh in estes colorado how they came up with the estes project yeah um uh, it's a form of remote viewing where they're actually talking yeah. to spirits mm-hmm. and stuff. Yeah, see, I, I love this stuff, too, because, you know, I remember the the first time I ever heard anything about remote viewing, and I want to say I was, I was pretty young, but I want to say it was on Unsolved Mysteries. I think I remember seeing something on something like that. I used to watch those shows all the time when I was a kid. That's what got me into all this kind of stuff, and um, I remember seeing something about that. And actually, I think it was probably about the Philadelphia experiment, honestly. But um, yeah, I uh, I always thought it was really cool. Um, and it's funny, not funny, but it, it makes sense to me that you know you were able to learn how to do that, and probably possibly everyone could po- probably learn how to do it. And some of us do it without knowing it, just being empathic and yeah. things like that, you know. Um, so, and I've always been empathic, so to speak. We kind of talked about it a little bit whenever you were on DA show. So I won't dig into that again. But, you know, um, yeah, I think it's, it, you're harnessing that, you know, and um, 
It's funny. It's kind of like the way I look at it is like I tell my wife, you know, when we're going to get, if she gets, if I start to get sick, I'm like, you know what? I just got to quit thinking about it. Quit thinking about it and move on with my day. And then eventually it just kind of goes away. I don't really feel bad anymore. It's weird, but I think that you can tell yourself, you know, you know, force it into fruition or mm-hmm. whatever. And oh, yeah. just kind of mm-hmm. tell yourself, believe enough into it, and then you can do it. So yeah, you I manifest. Want to, yes, yeah. exactly. And I want to let everyone know that, you know, <laughs> I, I got to re- rephrase it because I was going to be like, you're not special. <laughs> but no, <laughs> what I meant is, no, oh, I'm absolutely not special. Like, yeah, everyone can do this. Everyone can yeah. do it. They just kind of got to it. Sorry, I'm an asshole sometimes. Oh. I, I'm not special, I know. <laughs> no. <laughs> you are very special to us. No, but um. you are special in the, in, the, in the way that you allow yourself to open your mind up enough and believe enough to do something. I, trust me, I mean, a lot of I people, can't do what you do. I mean... I, I mean, could you hear. could, you could, but you know, I mean, it has taken years and years and years of training to do. Yeah. This. Yeah. So that's kind of what I, so it's it not takes, something you're necessarily born with. I've been doing this for uh, over 10 years. Wow. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, we're all born with psychic abilities. Everybody is born with psychic abilities. Uh, it's just, we're not, everybody's tuned into it. Not everybody's tapped in and our psychic abilities are under attack. They've yes. been under attack for centuries. Okay, and you got to think about all the, the fluoride in the water and the, um, the bad foods that, that aren't even foods, the processed foods that are, mm-hmm. you know, out there. Mm-hmm. And um, those things in the sky, those chemtrails and stuff like that, we don't know what they're spraying on us, you know. Um, there's just a whole lot of stuff that keeps us, uh, our third eye closed and mm-hmm. uh, the pineal gland calcified. And, uh, and, and plus people living in fear all the time. And, uh, oh, yeah. and the media pumping fear into society and wars and, you know, riots and all this, this. constant it's drama. Constant, constant. Yes. We don't have time to open up and experience life the way we're supposed to. You it's know, funny man. you say that, but like, it's like I was just saying earlier with the internet and stuff, like I, I like it and I hate it, you know? Yeah. But like, I've noticed I haven't watched TV in three years, four years, some shit. Now I can't even tell you. So, but there's just no, it's, I, I, the only way I get any kind of information about any kind of drama is if I hear it on one of the podcasts I listen to. And usually it's, it's nothing big and it's not as bad as everyone says it is. And I'm like, man, I, I live so much better not dealing with that. But also my mind is open. And, you know, doing what we do here on a podcast, talking to people like you and stuff like that, it's something that we really love. And we talk about all the time is the feeling you get, it, the nostalgia you get sometimes that brings you back to when you're a kid, when you watch a movie, when you hear a song, um, the feeling in the air, you know, in October, you know, that's our favorite time of year, you know, the fall, like people, they detach from that. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. and that's when they lose that I don't know, imagination. Hu- being human. Yes. Yeah. You know, you lose that. Yeah. And um, it's really cool doing this because we get to meet everyone. And then me and him always have conversations about this right. stuff. It's funny. Even when we're not recording, we're talking about weird stuff. Yeah. You know? <laughs> that's that's yeah. what we do, you know. And But now we get to talk Usually about- it's a little dirtier, but, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we try to keep ourselves a little calm when we're talking to other people. <laughs> Sometimes, but, uh, no. And then we get to talk to people like you who actually are in the field and know what they're doing and can tell well, us. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but a lot do. more than I do. I could never do what you do just because I'm bad with numbers. I'm so horrible at math. Is <laughs> math has, but trust me, math has nothing to do with it. Nothing. There's numbers and I write them down. I don't know what they mean. I yeah. write them down and they have a, they have a, an intention behind them. Okay, the target is a sign. That doesn't mean I'm, I'm adding and subtracting, dividing, or multiplying. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Okay. So, gotcha. so when you get these numbers, mm-hmm. uh, I don't want to have to have to explain everything, but how does it start off from there? Once you get the numbers, you what do you do after that? Yeah. Well, remote viewing is all about mind control. Okay. And it's not about me controlling your mind. It's about me controlling my mind. Okay. Yes. And, uh, and, and the number one thing, which makes it really good for people who are out in the field doing a uh, Bigfoot and paranormal field research, any research of any kind, shoot, actually just living everyday life. 
it's so good because it helps you to quieten your mind. Okay. It helps you to focus and, and clear all that junk out of your head. Cause how many times do you go through your day and you're just like, you don't even know how you got to point A to point B because you got so much crap going on in your head. You 100%. Yeah. 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 So, um, it's good. Yeah. So, so when I get those numbers, okay. Um, sometimes I get numbers and I'm, I'm assigned some numbers from the head of my team and they're high priority targets. Okay. So high priority. Usually that means there's a missing person or, um, some kind of emergency. Okay. And I, and when I get those numbers, I grab my paper and my, my pens and, uh, and I go, it's like a big stack of printer paper and I, I, y'all, I go through so much printer paper. It's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> but, but I go and I sit down and, um, and I quiet my mind and I, I get in like a meditative state kind of honestly, like we've been training, we do uh, the, the Monroe gateway programs and, um, uh, we, there's a process. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Where you have to really, you really have to get into a, a mind state. Okay. To do it. And, uh, but you sit there and put your feet on the ground, you ground yourself. I, I mean, it's almost got a spiritual aspect to it. Okay. Oh yeah. Uh, and so, but, but you get your mind quiet and you sit down and you put your pen on the paper and then you write your target down and then you automatically, your hand will start automatic writing into ideograms is what we call it. Okay. Usually there's about three ideograms and ideograms are symbols that my, my brain is going to pick up. They're symbols like natural structure, um, person, animal, fire, water, motion, tool, vehicle, uh, power, uh, space, air. I mean, but they're just little tiny symbols. And mm -hmm. I, I don't pay any attention to how my hand moves uh, down the paper. But when I look down, I, I can make out ideograms. Okay. And so that's where I write all that down. And all of a sudden, all this information, it's like the aperture opens up. And all this information starts flooding. Like, it's almost like I'm pulling information out of the matrix. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I start writing things down. Um, all my sensory data and then then I write down in a box the analytic overlay, which is um, my brain trying to make sense of what I'm seeing. Okay. Right, right. And uh, and then I sketch a drawing, and then I start going to other pad, turn the page, and then I write down all the sensory data. I can even uh, do a deep mind probe, you know, and get into people's heads and ask some questions. Uh, and so it's it's actually a really really cool tool to have in your belt. Okay? You see, yeah, and that's and. I've talked about this on the podcast quite often when we talk about things. Um, it kind of leads to, in, in my head, the way I look at it is, so when you start telling me right there that, you know, you're picking up all these things and it's like you're connected into this ether, you know, mm -hmm. I think that at one point in time before all this stuff was scrambling everything, we were all connected okay. and we could find someone. You know, right. just because right. through our th through our, our mind telepathy, telepathy, yeah. You know, now it's artificial. Now we have artificial telepathy. We have cell phones. Yeah, yeah. Now it's telepathetic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, you can't use my word. I coined that, but yeah. no. Uh, I heard that. But uh, no, I. Uh, it makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. You know that someone can do that because I believe that at one point in time we all could do that. Oh, yeah. You know, and like you said, you just have to ground yourself. Like we've talked about the Akashic Records and things like that mm -hmm. on, this, on this podcast. Yeah. And, you know, that's another place where you can go and, you know, receive information. And like you can get there through, like you said, grounding and meditation, you know. And it's funny. My wife always jokes at me all the time. She's like, babe, come on. We're going to go ground together. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, no. She's like, come on. So, but anyways. Um, yeah, I, it, it all makes sense to me. I don't know if it makes sense to this guy. <laughs> Cause that's just the way I think it. I, I look at it like that. You know, I look at it at, you know, of course it makes sense to me because in situations, people's minds end up clicking up anyway. Right. And you may not right. even know the person and you guys yeah. are like thinking the same thing. And that's just because that's the natch. That's our way of doing it. I think our brains are way more powerful. And I think that, you know, the reason why they throw, and I don't want to make anyone mad, but the reason why they throw like political parties and religion and certain things at us is so that, you know, it makes us not understand how special we are as humans. You know, I, I think that we're a special a being 
you know, yeah. they want us looking for someone to uh, lead and to. It's like we're we're made into good little slaves. You yeah, know? yeah, exactly. And uh, and we're always looking for a savior. We're always looking for people to get us out of jams and pickles. You know, and uh, and honestly, it's nobody's going to save you. You have to go within and and take care yep. of yourself. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And that's Tim Kennedy actually just made. I just watched a video on his YouTube page. That's what it says. No one is coming. No. One. That's what it says. That's the name of the video. No one is coming. You know. Yeah. You yeah, know, you got to do it on your own. Exactly, yeah. you know. Um, but you can also do it together. <laughs> if people would just, try. what are we talking about here? <laughs> yeah, we're not going this direction on this oh. episode. <laughs> All right, I'm done. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, if people would just open their minds up, and you know, which a lot of people do. Um, you know, I'm a bit, we're big music heads and stuff like that. We love music and things. And like one of my favorite bands, it's not his by any means, but one of my favorite bands is uh, Blink-182. And that's just because I grew Ooh. up I grew up with it. And, uh, <laughs> you know, Tom DeLonge, you know, yeah. with, you know, To The Stars a Academy. Guy. Dude, I told you he's with Three Doors Down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's trying to get slapped again. <laughs> Close your eyes. I don't want any witnesses. Close your eyes. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but, uh, no, you know, um, like with Tom DeLonge, people are like, oh, he's crazy. And I'm like, I don't think so, man. I, yeah, I don't think he's crazy either. I watched, did you watch that thing? I didn't watch the Steve O thing. I, it was I a really good that. interview, actually. He did a, an interview with Steve O. Steve O has a podcast called Steve O's Wild Ride or whatever. Yeah. And he, Tom DeLonge was on there. And he's, it's actually a really good interview. He got a lot of good information out of it. I'm like, wow. Have you looked at any of his stuff or listened to any of Tom yeah, DeLonge's? I, mean, I know who he is and I know right. his show, but I've, I've, I have not had time to do any watching of anything lately. Right. Yeah, so well, like Tom, it. Tom, he was the he was like the lead singer kind of yeah. Blink One Eight Two, you know, and it, but I totally then he, know who he is. Yeah. yeah, and then but like his, at first I thought, you know, I'm like, well, maybe he's a little nuts, but I love I I've always liked all the stuff they do. Well, then I yeah. started watching interviews with him, and like he started talking about the way the way it came about that he actually did things. And everyone was like, oh, there's no way that could happen like that. I'm like, man, that's how a lot of stuff happens. Basically, he started doing his own research. Yeah. Got a hold of some people because he's famous. Yeah. So people let him in a little bit. And then he got a little bit further in, you know, and it kind of just rolled downhill from there. Now, you know, as far as that goes, like, <clears throat> I'm a dimensional guy. I believe in parallel dimensions. That's where I'm at. I, I highly believe in all that. And it makes sense to me, like when they talk about, um, so, you know, Commander Favor, I don't know if you know the whole Tic Tac spaceship deal. So Commander Favor, was, he's like a highly respected military guy. He got video of this. He chased this thing or whatever. They didn't know what it was. There's no propulsion system. There was nothing with it. It went from 80,000 feet to like 50 feet in a second and they're like oh it doesn't make sense and I'm like to me it does it's just a portal boom boom you're here yeah. you know that's like me like going from my from here to my house in a second yeah it's a portal i mean it, there's not it's not just ufos i mean out in the field doing i've been doing bigfoot field research for almost 12 years and uh there's a total x factor and i mean i i absolutely believe that they're able to maybe go interdimensional, maybe mm -hmm. run th go through portals. My team has actually documented a portal opening up in the field where we were researching and we sent two team members inside of it and they disappeared. Their heat signature completely disappeared, but you couldn't see this thing except for through the thermals and the FLIR. Okay. Wow. Uh, and they didn't even know what they were, that we, they were just guided over to it and their heat signatures completely disappeared. And then they, they said the entire environment changed. They turn around, they walk back out, and then their heat signatures reappeared. So, I there are portals, you guys. There's portals. I don't. I, I personally believe that could have been military technology or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, that gets into I something. Say it was alien. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and my thing with the whole alien thing is, like, I, I think a lot of people have misconceptions, and that's like uh, when I was listening to some of the other podcasts and other interviews and documentaries I've watched. They talked about how like people are all caught up on this. Well, in order to get from this planet to this planet, it takes this many you know hours and this many days. Blah blah. It's like no time doesn't matter. Yeah. Time doesn't matter. That's like right. time is not a thing. That's that's me. I'm the space travel guy. Yeah. He's like, well, you gotta go. I'm like, well, it doesn't matter with these portals and his dimensions. Right. It's just 
you know, I'm here, now I'm gone. Yeah. You know, you know that, that's interesting you brought that up because I, I knew better, right? As a remote viewer, there are certain things that are off limits, okay? Mm -hmm. Especially talking about publicly. And I decided to do a show on the Apollo 11 moon landing. And I remote viewed it. And uh, in about two hours before my show, I got a very stern warning. I got contacted, told to keep my mouth shut about that. Really? So, I talked. Yeah. To, I talked to him yeah. about. I talked to him about that. He he wants yeah. to kick my ass when I talk about like the actual moon yeah. landing and stuff. And I'm yeah. just like, look, man. I'm sorry. If I was the first guy to step on the moon, when I came back, I would not keep my mouth shut about that. Right. Yeah. How many interviews did they do? One. Yeah. And they looked like they were in, under duress. Yeah. But, <laughs> and then, they looked like and they were then, pissed off to be there. And then uh, Buzz out there freaking just, you know, he's kind of. He's watched, all over the place, right? I watched this yeah. thing and he's just little kids like, hey, Buzz, you know, he's asking a question. He's like, yeah. how'd you feel about uh, something about going to the moon? He's like, we didn't go. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't just, help that he's got, he's got like his little Illuminati finger over his little uh, yeah. symbol over his eye. And, he and if you look up. at the flight pattern of the spaceship, it looks like a phallic symbol. Okay. It's almost like a big joke or something. Huh. Yeah. Uh, for, for me, like, trust me, I'm all about. <laughs> kind of common sense and what makes sense to me yeah he's more of a science guy but he I'm also, not Bill Nye. he's also <laughs> he's also open-minded you know and understands that yeah. you know we really don't know 100 percent on anything that's why i tell everyone i'm like i know a cell phone works because i can pick it up and i can call someone and it works that's right. how i know right. that it that it's that's the science i believe in because i pick it up i call it's there <clears throat> it's pretty crazy to me how i can send you a video right but that's what it is. I believe in that. It's for me. It's just kind of hard for me to believe when they say like, "Oh, we just got a." What was that thing recently when they said that we just got a message from something that's been like billions of miles away? Space. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I can't remember what it was, but I'm just like, how? Yeah. And then I tell. Him, <laughs> well, so, uh, and then I asked him. I was like, "You do know that uh, I can't remember what the, who the president was, but called the spaceship from a landline." Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. you know, it, it, a lot of this doesn't make sense. So I don't know. Well, here's, here's the here one thing that I've discovered through doing remote viewing and looking at all of these um, paranormal attacks and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. From the Dyatlov Pass incident where those hikers in uh, Soviet Russia were. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all the way to. Um, let's see what else we have. I don't like the Beast of LBL, like the Dogman attacks and things like that. The government is fully aware, if not involved, in all of these cases that I've looked into. Okay. Wow. Fully involved in most of these cases. The Dietlaw Pass was all military with a little touch of alien stuff going on. Yeah. A lot of little UFO things and some human mutilations. So, um, Ooh, human mutilations. Human mutilations. Yeah. See, that, like, I, I highly believe all that stuff. Some things. If, if it's too much for me, to, I'm like, look, this is what I believe, and I'll find out later on, whatever. But it, what what boils what blows my mind is that like, I'll hear someone say something, and okay, I'm not gonna mention his name. You know who I'm talking about. Um, he has predicted so many things that come true down the road, and the only reason I'm not saying it because it'll probably won't even let us put our freaking podcast up if on youtube if we even oh i know who you're talking about yeah so I just got that telepathy from me exactly so he's he's predicted so much and it, and he even yeah. said i didn't predict anything he's like i just got information and i put it out there yeah. and it just so happens that six months a year two years three years down the right. road it comes true yeah. and um when i see that i'm like okay that's good information i can trust that i don't tend to trust things that when people like this is what you have to do. This is what you have to believe, no matter what. If it don't make sense, I don't believe it. I got a feeling. I use my gut and my mind, and that's that's how I judge things. That's you the know? way everybody should judge things. We've got to get away from looking to a savior for the media or doctors or whoever yeah. to tell us what's good for us and what's right. I mean, they're going to fact check us, okay? 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Basically opposite of what the truth is. I'm just saying. <laughs> I am going to tell you, we did learn a valuable lesson this week. Uh-oh. Don't put a picture of Jeffrey Dahmer on your Facebook page. <laughs> oh, God, yeah, we got freaking. So <laughs> tell her a story there. <laughs> <laughs> so I get a message from Facebook yesterday, and they're like, oh, the Horror Chronicles podcast. You're uh, banned for 30 days from doing live videos because of a post you put up two years ago. Oh, my God. <laughs> and all it was was it was a picture of Jeffrey Dahmer. And it said, I've been craving five guys since before they were a restaurant. <laughs> and that's it. it uh, you know, that's it. And they, they, they hit me with a 30, they hit me with a 30 day ban from a post. It was February of 2020 <laughs> was when I put that post up and I'm like, okay, funny. whatever, you know? So of course I disputed it and they're like, all right, well, since you disputed it, we, uh, they basically told us we couldn't go live for 30 days. Yeah. And I'm like, that's moronic, but whatever. So uh, they, uh, after I disputed it, they were like, okay, well, we're just going to remove the post. Whatever. <laughs> you yeah, know, like, come it's on. It's gone anyway. Nobody's, nobody's going yeah, to that I mean, far back except see, for It was two years, years ago. <laughs> come on, whatever, yeah. you know. So I took a screenshot of it, and I reposted it. And <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, <laughs> We're just testing the waters. That's how you roll. So That's the good. Horror Chronicles will not be on Facebook anymore. Uh, <laughs> we just need to build our own website. I, we just got to yeah. get to it. But, um, <laughs> oh, no, listen, you guys, I got banned. I, I got completely banned the first day within 24 hours of starting my uh, Facebook page uh, because I put the Cryptid Huntress on there. And uh, one of my teammates was on a show called Killing Bigfoot. Okay. And, uh, and I had put, uh, I had done an interview with him and I put his picture on there and it said killing Bigfoot. And it had like a, a sight on a gun on the yeah. picture. It was the, it was the show's logo. Yeah. I got permanently banned from Facebook. Oh my God. Yes. Yeah, so all you do is go open another page with another yeah. email address. It's not yeah. It's just, yeah. it's just ridiculous. It's just a point. You, you know. know, it was, it's ridiculous. This is, but you know what, what it, what it does do for me and something that I think is cool. It's like, you know what? This is another reason why we all just need to get together. Yeah. yeah. And have a convention or something. Yeah. You know, where you're physically We have there. talked about doing that, too. And we're going to. I'm going to start up our own convention. You know, we live in the middle of basically the United States, so it's a good spot for everyone to travel. You don't have to travel so far. You know, it's like right in the middle. So it's just, it, yeah. it, it gives me a reason to get everyone right together. Right in the middle of everything. You know. Smack dab. Yeah, not, exactly. Not, not on the left cheek, not on the right cheek. Yeah, right, right in the middle. Right in the middle. You know. Um, the crack of America. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, I'm oh, never where, mind. I'm not going to go. But that, is, but that is Manscaped. So let's get to no. <laughs> there was That would have been a good freaking segue into, into oh, a freaking man. little uh, oh. ad there. We got approached by Manscaped to do some sponsoring, and we did, we did a rather risque commercial for them, and they were like, eh, no, we don't think so. I'm like, wait, what? Go big or go home, bro. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> but no, we live we live in Rollo. It's just basically... We live in Missouri. Yeah, middle of Missouri. Missouri. Yeah, yeah, we're... Okay. we're we're, we're actually, it's, it's funny, we're only like an hour and a half, two hours from DA. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. He, he lives, what is it, like 120 miles yep. or something down the road from us? Yeah, he come, he, we, we actually just had dinner with him not too long ago. He came down. And yeah, he was he was traveling through. Him and his wife were going to St. Louis, so he stopped and saw us, and we all had dinner together. Oh, so, I love DA. Yeah, yeah he and is, that's the he thing. Like, and that's what's he cool about this. You know, like, everyone get together, and it's just, we went to a convention, and I just love the atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. You know, and we every, met so many people there. It was crazy. Everybody was cool, and it's just, man, you you miss that human interaction. And that's very yeah. important, yeah. you know. Yeah. And it just, I going to that convention really, really spurred me to want to do one and just bring everybody in and. So I think that's going to be really fun. Oh, 100% yeah. we totally are. I just, I just got to work on it. And yeah. we have a lot of connections, a lot of people that can show. And I just got to I got to get the ins and outs of it. But it's going to happen eventually, hopefully in the very near future. But I'm working on yeah. it. I'm working on it. But yeah. speaking of the future, so with remote viewing, 
can you go can you go into and predict things or possibility mm-hmm. of things and stuff like that? Absolutely. Is, Man, is that, that's a great that, set. Give me a high five for that fucking is segment. That, is that so. still remote <laughs> viewing or would that be considered precognition? I mean, don't use your big It's still words, remote though. viewing. It's, okay. it's still remote viewing. Yeah. I mean, it's using your psychic faculties, okay? And it, it precognition, I, I would consider that a little bit different, okay? okay. What I'm saying has a structure to it. And it's uh, the remote viewing is um, it's structure, okay? Yeah. Uh, being precognitive is just kind of having uh, insight, like just psychic downloads. Premonition, kind of like. Yeah. See, and I've, I, I definitely have done that with dreams, you know. Um, I say dreams, but or is it deja vu or whatever, you know. But it, yeah, um, I've definitely, I just happened to me the other day. I'm like, I 100% know it's going to happen here. And sure enough, like, I'm like, there's going to be this car, this color car around this corner here when I walk around this corner. Boom, I turn the corner, there's that car. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> How the hell did I know that? Yeah, yeah. You know? And, but it's just because I've awesome. seen it. I've seen it in my dreams. Mm-hmm. I keep my head pretty pretty open, man. I I don't ever want to lose that imagination. I don't ever want to lose that power to freaking, you know, just, I do not do not want to be a drone. That's, that's funny because <laughs> no, I do that with music a lot. Like... You know, you'd be listening to something, and I'm like, man, I hope the next song is this. And then all of a sudden, it's that. And you're like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I yeah, I just, um, I think I think that people need to... Um, you know, when you listen to a radio station where they only play five songs, it's, you know... <laughs> well, it's kind of easy to guess which song's yeah, coming on yeah. next. Yeah, I don't freaking watch listen to the radio at, at all. I, me neither. The stuff they put out now is just... I don't it's, even know. It's just, like, so monotonous and just... Uh, it, it, I feel like we're being dumbed down. So oh, much. that's a hundred percent. Absolutely, a hundred percent. Every time Ryan Turn comes off. over here, I feel like I'm being dumbed down. <laughs> and um, you're welcome. <laughs> I'll tell you what. When I'm in the car, I'll tell you're you what I'm listening to. Right? I'm listening to the Horror Chronicles podcast. Is yeah. what I'm listening to. Yeah, shout it out, shout it out. Boom, boom. Sometimes I can't. Oh, and spaced out radio. Boom. You better be listening to spaced yes. out radio. Yeah. Absolutely. At, on the weekends. There you go. Check it out, guys, on the weekends. Space Sailor Radio. Got to check well, it out. And weeknights, too. Dave Scott has his show every weeknight. Oh, there and you go. I, I, I've got a weekend spot. That's yeah. awesome. Nice. Yeah, nice. we were on the radio for a while. We were on, like, an internet radio program. Yeah, Cranium. Cranium Radio. They, cool. would, play, they yeah. would play our episodes and stuff. Yeah, it was you a know, radio station out of Phoenix or Tucson. I don't know, somewhere in Arizona. Yeah. And I tell you, it's really cool. We talked about this before quite often, you know, but like there's no imagination anymore. There's no, there's no mystery for some people, for for a lot of people. Like my sons, my sons, they're not going to know how it is to like, they are now because I don't let them have phones and I don't let them, you know, you don't let them have fun. Yes. Yeah. No fun. No, but uh, <laughs> we have way too much damn fun. That's a problem. But um, no, um, I let them keep that mystery because they'll ask me. Like my kids love horror movies just like I do. They love being scared. They love all that kind of stuff. And my son will ask me, "Dad, is this real?" I'm like, "I don't know. Do you think it's real?" He's like, "Yeah, I think it's real." I'm like, "Well, then you better watch out because it's probably real." You know? And I just do that yeah. to him. He's like, "What's going to happen?" I'm like, "I'm here. I'm not going to let nothing happen to you." But We'll deal with it when it comes, you know. Well, it's good. It's good for kids to understand there's real, real life threats out there. My son oh, yeah. likes likes scary stuff too. I mean, he's got you know uh, Jason Voorhees fi- figurines and stuff in his room. His whole bedroom actually is um, Halloween themed. Okay. So, oh, sweet. Yeah. Yeah. He's got ghosts and zombies and everything in there. Nice. Yeah, my <laughs> kids. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, my sons are on my butt all the time. That can I watch this? I'm like, no, man. It's got some stuff in there. It's it's mainly nudity and stuff that I don't want them to see. They under they understand about the gore and the and the slashing and stuff. I'm like, they know what that. I don't want to see is. that either. They know what that is. But like, uh, I I don't know. I'm just right now. I don't feel comfortable with them watching certain stuff. And they're like, oh, please, we'll, we could turn off those parts. And I'm like. You know, there's a lot of those parts in these movies. A lot of the, a lot of the '80s movies we watch are freaking. Sorry, son. This movie has 68 minutes of a guy cutting somebody's head off, <laughs> and two minutes of a boob shot. <laughs> We're not watching this. Hey, I got. Oh, I got. I got. I got. I got to have prioritized. You know. <laughs> but no, uh, I try to let them keep their minds open and let them be kids and. 
I mean, to a point, I guess I really act like a kid too. I mean, most you of the time, you know, but that keeps me young. I got carded the other day by this 22 year old dude. <laughs> and he's like, uh, he's like, you don't look this old. <laughs> I'm like, well, thanks, bud. Said if I shave this beard off, I look younger than you. So <laughs> that's a compliment. I wouldn't mind getting that. Oh compliment yeah. One day. Uh, yeah. I, I don't care. I was just laughing. I was like, <laughs> dude, it's funny. A lot of people can't believe it when I tell them how old I am. I know, sixty-two, <laughs> man, sixty-two. Old, <laughs> He's only fifty. You do. You don't look a day over fifty-five. I don't. I don't look a day over four hundred. Um, <laughs> Nasratu. Yeah. But anyways, but anyway, back, to, back to what anyway. we were talking about. Sorry, we go off on tangents. Yeah, we have been way, we've went way off. <laughs> it's a fun conversation, though. <laughs> so, but we're having a good time. Um, so, do you, have you guys ever remote viewed into the, any of these portals or anything like that that you found? Or is there any- yeah, well, we we have now. Uh, a lot of unfortunately, a lot of my targets are classified. Like I can't yeah. really talk about it because it's right. part of our research that my team does. Uh, but I, the guys that I went in it. I've interviewed, uh, well, Bob, one of those passed away um, since that happened. And, uh, and both, of, both of the men that went into this portal, they both got really bad health problems after that. There was a huge dose of radiation. Well, it was, I'm not going to say huge, but there was a, a, a nice little dose of radiation. Enough, uh, we, yeah. We have dagger counters out there in the field and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, one of them got a, a heart problem and the other one's uh, cancer came back pretty aggressively. Wow. So, right after this. So it's probably not safe to enter into any, any of these portals. No, it's not. Well, and, you know, I, I'd like to think that maybe this is where these missing people are going uh, in all of our national parks. Uh, with that missing 411 series by David Politis. Uh-huh. Uh, see, the thing about it is, is that this thing, uh, we have this on film, actually. We look like a big cube. We call it the cube. And, uh, and it was not visible to the naked eye. Uh, but it was a big square, and it was about the size of a shed out behind your house, like mm-hmm. a big shed. Uh, they both walked over to it. They disappeared. They said that when they walked in it, the vegetation on the ground changed. It went from briary and brushy and muddy to smooth. Okay. The stars disappeared. They couldn't see the stars anymore. They said it was like walking into a black velvet curtain, and when they, when they walked in, the temperature dropped. Wow. Okay. wow. Yeah, it was a, a completely different environment. And both of them are former military. One is, was an um, Army uh, Special Forces Ranger. The other uh, was in the Navy and uh, law enforcement, the search and rescue guy. And, you know, yeah, they, they both knew to get out of there. See, and that's wow. – and, and <clears throat> so I'm wondering – sorry, I'm putting all this stuff together in my own mind. Yeah, um, it's a lot to – Kind of, well, yeah. what, I, what I'm, what I'm, because I'm listening to what you're telling me, and I'm trying to put together in my mind what I already have going on. So, like, as a dimension, because I, like I said, I'm a, I believe in dim- dimensions and everything, multiple dimensions. I believe there's ways you could reach those. But here's the key, and this is also leads into the whole what your soul is or what your aura mm-hmm. is. I believe that your soul, your spirit can travel into these other lands, but your body, your meat suit isn't physically ready to, or capable to go through there. So like, that's why through lucid dreaming or just, you know, DMT, things like that, you can open up that portal in your mind and go to that or like the, or just meditation kind of like remote viewing is almost getting there to where you can access these portals or these different dimensions but your body just yeah exactly but your body can't physically go go there well and and that's what they say a lot about uh some of these et abductions some some people say well maybe it's not the physical body that goes maybe it's your astral body that they're taking exactly Mm -hmm. yeah you know so um and that's like when we're dreaming at night you know i feel like i travel i i I do a lot of work in the fifth dimension and higher when i'm sleeping me too you ever ever woken up and you're just exhausted and you've got a really good night's sleep but you just feel like you've been working all night and stuff it's probably because your astral body was doing a bunch of work all night and and dealing with people and you know getting in fights and whooping butt you know all night (laughs) yeah i've uh i've definitely yeah definitely done that on a different plane and that's the whole thing that's why i like i you know 
that makes it all makes sense to me and wraps up in my mind and that you're explaining it from a different point of view and it just further you know makes me believe and lead into what i already believe you know because it's more evidence to me and i think it's pretty freaking awesome you know and i oh, think yeah. i wish people would just open up their minds sometimes I, I talk to some people about it and and it's funny because i have a lot of people i've talked to and when i first started this podcast or we did three years ago almost four years now Whew. yeah four Happy years birthday. four years almost <laughs> yeah um like a lot of people are like oh you're crazy man and blah blah and they start listening to my podcast and they know me and they know that like, i'm not like a bullshitter you know and i'm not like a I don't know. I'm I'm not just going to say something to be pointless. And then they start listening and they start listening to other people that we bring on like you and, you know, DA people like that and whatever. And they're like, wow, okay. They look further into it. And then now I got people who were like, oh, when do you guys put another episode? When do you guys put another episode? You know? And I'm like, we're working on it, man. You know, we got a really one good one coming. You guys are really going to listen to it. That was this episode we were talking about. And I'm like, because this encompasses everything for me and it brings everything in into a perspective that I think other people can understand, you know, without going too far off the rails with it, you know? Well, you know, and the way that I describe remote viewing, it's a little more complicated. Okay. than the way I describe it, I'd like to put a fun touch to everything that I do. And I, and I try to kind of simplify things because <clears throat> listen, when I, it took a long time to learn remote viewing and, uh, and to really get pretty good at it, you have to do at least 100 targets, and that takes a long time. <clears throat> now, I, I, I feel like I've been called for some, some crazy reason just mm -hmm. to, like, kind of explain remote viewing and put it out there and get people's feet wet with this concept mm -hmm. uh, because I like to have fun with it, and it's a fun hobby for me. I'm not super serious about like the technical sides of this and everything where, you know, people will, that are really into remote viewing, like they'll throw all these questions at me and I'm like, Hey, y'all send me an email. We'll talk about this in private, you know, right, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm just trying to get it out there for people to open their minds to it right now. Okay. Oh yeah. We, want to get technical, we can get technical with it, but that's not what I'm trying to do right now is I'm just trying to uh, give like a, a simple explanation of beginners right yeah beginners and that's why i do that show on friday nights remote viewing investigations with jessica jones with texas <laughs> front porch because i do fun remote viewing targets and it's um dog man attacks alleged bigfoot attacks the ape canyon attack the beast of lbl uh tex had some missing time when he was out doing bigfoot field research and i looked into that he was abducted by the way and so um i'm, I'm just doing I'm going to say fun. I know that wasn't fun for text, but I, right. I do fun targets, you know, uh, stuff that people have heard about. I look into it by remote viewing ways and, uh, and I have people that will come in and back up what my data is and, and the, the witness some of these things and stuff. And so it's really, it's a really fun show and it's really just opening up people's minds. I like to say it's like an elementary school version of remote viewing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you yeah. go. How yeah. often do you do this? Uh, every Friday night. No, no, no. I mean, remote viewing remote. in general. I mean, is well, it? You know, it, I, I used to not do it this much, but now that I have this show, my goodness. Well, I do it at least once a week. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. But I, but I do it more. You know, I look into I look into a lot of stuff. Uh, you know, before I started this show, I just did it whenever I got a target. You know, when I was assigned a target by the head of my team, if there was a high priority or we had some practice targets to do or something. So... Yeah, and of course I have people contacting me daily wanting me to help them. And right. I just it's it's I can't. I can't help everybody. Yeah, yet. exactly. It takes yeah. a lot out on me. And um yeah, it, it it's it's a process and it literally drains my life force sometimes. Yeah, wow. but you also are helping everyone by introducing it. You know, yeah, introducing people sure. to it. Yeah. But hey, help yeah. yourself. Exactly. You know? Yeah, because, I mean, honestly, I didn't know that much about it until we talked to you on DA's show. I mean, I'd heard of it, but never really, you know, looked at it I had never heard of much. it either. Listen, I had never heard of remote viewing until I got taught remote viewing. Wow. I didn't even know what it was. Yeah, I knew about it a long time ago. And then, you know, um, that movie, The Minister of Goats, came out. And people, I, that's, that's, a, yeah. that's when people jumped in and started talking about it but like i said i learned i heard about it way back in the day when i was used to watch like you know 
unsolved mysteries and things like that kind of got me into it. That was my favorite it. show. Yeah. yeah. They had they had ghost ghost stories and stuff on oh, there. Yeah. That was my oh, that a bunch yeah. of cool stuff. I and um Yeah, I used to love that show. They've got a new one out now. I I, I actually go back there's a there's a there's a free site you can watch stuff called uh, Freebie, and it's just a yeah. they play TV I just shows. I saw that today for the first time. It's on awesome. My TV. It's awesome. Yeah. Like I've been watching X Files for the last. I went. I've been. I'm on like season two, episode. I don't know eight or nine. But it's funny because I was telling Gerald, like, uh, I was like, dude. I just watched today. The last episode I watched was about the Philadelphia Project yeah. <laughs> experiment. Yeah, <laughs> and I was uh-huh. like, it's just it just so happened that's where it was at today. So I was like, Pff. you know, wow. I mean, it's kind of how it goes. It's it's crazy. Yeah, but um, um, you, you remember the the old show Sightings? Yeah. Yes, that was a cool show too. I used to yeah, really like that. And I wouldn't mind going back and watching those. That's what I do. I know. go back and I watch older shows that you know just didn't put it's funny because like x-files was like the first conspiracy show you know it was like one of the first ones that were putting stuff out there it was soft disclosure i think yeah Yeah. and that's my point is like now you know people always oh that that can't happen that happens in movies like no man they do that so that when stuff happens you're not prepared. so freaked out about it, you right. know. They yeah. put it, right. they put it there so that, you know, it's when like you see it. Predictive programming, kind yeah. of, but because they know that we're going to awaken to the truth, you know. And uh, I don't know. That's that's why I enjoy doing my remote viewing show is because, um, you know, that's. I think this is the future. To be honest with you, I think that um, people need to wake up to it. And then we got the whole issue of like the timeline split right now, and there's some yeah. people that are like in one timeline and there are other people in another timeline and some are just taking off and wanting to learn things like remote viewing. Other people right. are stuck in the old ways and they just want to live in fear, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's either fear based <clears throat> society or let's break out of this society. And that's kind of like what they're talking about with CERN, right? Like yeah. it, 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 when they did that the first time or whatever in the hydrogen collider or whatever, mm-hmm. it's, and it opened up, split those times or whatever like that. Right. Right. Yeah. There's a, well, I, it, just, it makes more dimensions and stuff. I actually had a, a gentleman on my show named Frank Jacob. You guys, please look him up. He is so he's at, he's based in Germany, but um, he's a film a, a film director. And uh, why have I heard that name? Well, he's he's pretty popular, and right now he's really big on Project Looking Glass. And uh, that's why uh, he was on. I think he was on Tinfoil Hat. Yeah, he was on my show about a month ago. Awesome. Uh, the the weekend before CERN turned back on that last time. Okay. So, yeah. Yes, he was oh, on. Gosh. That's where I heard that name. He, I think he was on, <clears throat> which is Sam Tripoli, which I love Sam, Sam Tripoli. He has like eight different podcasts. Yeah. But uh, yeah. he does Temple Hat podcast in there. I think he was on there talking. That's pretty cool. He's my go-to person, man, when it comes to, uh, because the Project Looking Glass technology, y'all know about that, right? Yeah, 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 actually, that's one of the things we were going to talk about a little bit, if we got into it. There are certain things we were going to talk about if we got into it. But we've been doing good here, so. (laughs) Oh, yeah, dude. No, that's the whole thing. Like, with us, I've heard heard podcasts where people are like, oh, we're going to talk about this, and then we're going to talk about this, (laughs) and then we're going to talk about this. And it's like, man, people want to hear an honest conversation. Right. You know, that's what they want to hear. And that's like with us when we do edit thing. We don't edit anything aside from putting our intro music in and putting our outro stuff out. We really don't edit anything out of the podcast unless right. someone's like, "Look, don't put that on air." Yeah. <laughs> and then we're like, okay. then we'll time stamp it and, and go we'll back and make a special episode out of it. <laughs> <laughs> put it right at the beginning of the episode. Uh, no, like no. It. Listen uh, to the listen to what she said. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'd never do that. No, we but wouldn't. um, but yeah, you know, I just I think that people want to hear because whenever you're, they want to hear real, exactly, you know, exactly. And whenever you're being real about authentic. something, yeah. authentic, you yeah. know, and that's what we have some guys that I highly respect in the game that you know, like like uh, Dave Becker. Yeah, you know, and yeah. Dave Becker, he's a podcast guy, but he's he, he's more movies. You know, they call them like the Encyclopedia of Knowledge, like. He's, Great guy. He's really big in the. He does a does 
a few shows. One of them is called DVD Infatuation, and he does Land of the Creeps, and basically he does movie reviews and stuff. He was a he was great a great guy, super intelligent, really good know? dude. And he told he texts us all the time, like, man, you guys just listen to your last episode, love it. So that makes me feel good knowing that someone who has been in a game for a very long time, you know, respects what we're doing and loves that we're just, you know, real with it. And that's yeah. missing a lot in the world anymore. Yeah, absolutely. It Being is. Honest People just can't have real conversations anymore. Yeah, know. and a lot of people like stuff we're talking about right now, a lot of people are like, oh, my gosh, you guys are crazy, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, I don't care. You know, yeah. well, anyone who's on a different frequency right now, too. And so there's just some people that are meant to hear it and some people that aren't, you know, right. yeah. some people understand it. And those that aren't or don't, they won't hear it. So. Yeah. 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 And it hits people differently, you know, and, you know, it's funny. We talk a lot about movies and stuff and movies do the same thing. You know, it depends on what frame of mind you're in on if you're going to get into this conversation or not, you know, mm -hmm. and. And I'm always in this kind of mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I constantly talk about stuff all the time, and I'm lucky, you know, that, you know, me and my wife have been together for 20 years, almost 21 years, since we were like 14, and, um, you know, she's just my person. Like, from day one since we met each other, it was just like, I mean, wow. we were just connected instantly. And um, that leads to the Akashic Records things, you know, and you find your people throughout life, the different lifespans or different dimensions, wherever you're going, you find your people. And um, I'm lucky that I found her because, you know, she loves all the kind of stuff. She likes scary movies, but she also loves Disney and all that kind of stuff. But she, she likes, and she also likes learning about stuff like this and learning about the Akashic Records and all that kind of thing. So I got very lucky with that, I guess, luck. I don't know. Mm. Yeah. No. Well, yeah. We, can never, we should never stop learning. That's yes. such a no, big thing. Absolutely not. Yeah. hundred percent. You know, and for me, I, I, <laughs> I was fortunate enough to have a dad that really didn't teach me much of anything. <laughs> so I'm always learning, <laughs> but like, you know, it's like when I had my sons, I had to teach myself everything before I taught them anything. Right. So like I had yeah. to teach myself how to do this, how to do that, how to hunt, how to work on things, how to do this so I could teach them. So, like, I never played basketball or sports, really, when I was a kid. I got in, you know, the most I've done, I got into fighting. I've done MMA for a while and got into martial arts. But, I mean, as far as sports goes, I never played none of that stuff. So, like, my son got into baseball and basketball. So, like, I helped coach, and I learned everything from the other coaches and stuff like that and just learned, and then I had to teach him. So, it's actually really cool. When you're always learning, it's just it's – just, Life never gets boring. Exactly. Right. right. Exactly. It blows my mind when I, I see posts or on social media or just somebody tells me, I'm bored. I'm like, what is wrong with you? Exactly. Yeah, there's so much to do. How do you I get mean, bored? No, what you're, what you're saying is that you've been on fucking TikTok for eight hours and you don't know what to fucking do with your life. Right. You oh know, gosh, hypnotized. Bad, you know, and it's yeah. just kind of like, uh, <laughs> I'm lucky too, my kids. Now my youngest is starting to get where he wants to be on the damn TV all the time. So he freaked out now because we'll tell him, I'm like, buddy, you got an hour. You could be on the tablet for an hour, then it's time to get off of it. You know? And he tries to freak out. I'm like, look, this is what it is. Or next time you won't have it at all. So he eventually gets over it. And then they got Nerf guns and they go do their thing. But a lot of the kids today, and that's the thing, it's just, like you said, it's the dumbing down of the nation, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what's, that's what's bad about it. And people really don't know what they're missing. Just go in and have a conversation with someone. Yeah. You know? I mean, the best thing in the world for me personally is getting out in the woods with my friends and yeah. going just camping. You know, I say I do Bigfoot research, but really we just like to go out and go camping. And yeah, Oh, who said that? Activity. There was some, you probably know who it is. Uh -huh. He's a big, Bigfoot researcher, and I, uh, he said that. He said, someone asked him, um, so what happens at the end of the day? You guys do all this stuff, and you know, but you never find out what happened to Bigfoot. He's like, look, one of two things is going to happen. Either we're going to find Bigfoot and make a proof, or we're going to go camping. He's like, and either way, part. Yeah, yeah, he's like, either way, either way, I'm having a good I'm time, having a good time you with know? our friends, right? Yeah, you know, I I would have never met JT, and he's one of my best friends now. You know, yeah. if we wouldn't have started talking Aww, about, if we wouldn't have started talking about, you know, music and movies and things, mm -hmm. you know, just by kind of a conversation, I'm like yeah. I'm always talking to people, you know. Yeah, me too. And you miss that. 
if you don't, well, you, what they say, you miss 100% of the shots you don't make, you take, you know what I'm saying? So you got to talk to people. And I think that people would see that we're all connected and how easy it probably would be, you know, for someone like you, if you were, say, you were in the room with people, 10 random people, teaching them or having them just kind of get into the mindset of where they need to be at, how quickly that could happen if they all would just do it, you know? Focus. Well, I'm really good about that. I can, uh, I'm, I'm, I never knew I was really good at teaching, but I think, I think I am. Uh, I, ha I have a nice, easy way of getting my point across to people in a very nice, southern, sweet way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're down in Georgia, you said, right? Yes. I'm so, born and raised right here Awesome. So, um, was it, isn't like Savannah supposed to be really hot in it? It is. Yeah. I used yeah. to, I went to school down at Georgia Southern, which is down in South Georgia, uh -huh. about an hour from Savannah. And uh, yeah, we used to go to the cemetery. There's like this huge cemetery downtown in Savannah with moss on the trees and like huge tombstones and sort of, what do you call those things? Like where the, the mausoleums. mausoleums. Yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah, we, we had a lot of fun down there. It was very haunted. Any cool stories, you know? Um, not, not that I, I should be telling on air. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're talking, we're talking right? about hauntings. Yeah. You know, yeah, we're we're talking about I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, well, I wasn't a ghost hunter back then. I was just having fun. Right, oh, yeah, right. Yeah, I get yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, I get yeah. you. Oh, actually, I do have a good story uh, down in Statesboro. There's this place that we used to go to on the weekends called Ghost Road. And, uh, and it was a haunted road out in the middle of a field. You awesome. Know, uh, yeah, they had like tobacco fields and uh, corn fields and all this stuff. And uh, you drive, I forgot the name of the, the little village, I want to say village. It was like a community, uh, a farming community. But you drive down there and you would park at the end of this dirt road, okay? And you get out of your car and there was a street light with a little... Um, but like a little hut or something like an old house mm -hmm. underneath where the street light was on the road and so you get out of your car and the thing was like you, you tried to you'd walk towards it and you could see a soldier with a bayonet like a gun a rifle with a bayonet mm -hmm. on it and he would he was patrolling he would walk across the road in that light the beam that would be go across yeah the yeah road. He would, right you would walk from you know right to left and then back and it was like he was patrolling and uh and you just sit there watching him Wow. And uh, I saw it many times. And, and when you're really brave, you just drive right through it eventually, you know, when you're trying to leave. That's oh, cool. Yeah. yeah, it's called Ghost Road. Yeah. We've got yeah. a place up here. Uh, well, it's up in St. Louis area called Zombie Road. And it's, uh, it's an old, uh, basically, it's an old railroad path. Um, it was their, you know, way of getting to the tracks and stuff. And, uh, whenever you go there at night well now you can't go there at night they've they've closed it off to any kind of nighttime traffic and there's always police out there patrolling but when when i was younger uh you could go there at night and it was really creepy as you would be walking down the road um if you'd look to the sides of the road you could see what looked like shadow people standing along the sides of the road as you're walking through there. Um, there was a lot of stories, which never happened to me, but there was a lot of stories about people being chased off the road by like phantom cars or, you know, Satanists or whatever, you know, none of that ever happened to me, but the, the walking down the road and like, if, if you look off to the side of the road, it was really creepy looking. I mean, it looked like shadow people standing along the road, watching you walk by. You know, pretty, yeah. pretty cool place. See, and that's like, for me, the land that we grew up, that I grew up, well, I say grew up on, I grew up down here, but when I was younger, up till I was about eight or nine years old, we lived up towards Troy, which there's a lot of Native American stuff up there. Like, our high school team was the Winfield Warriors, and like Troy, we were right next to Troy, Winfield and Troy right next to each other. And then Troy was the um, Troy Trojans and stuff like that. And But anyways, so my dad, um, like, used to, he used to burn our trash and stuff, right? Our compost and whatnot. And um, he was digging in the backyard one day, and um, 
he hit this um, thing. It was like a big freaking, looked like a big arrowhead, but a big one. And then after that happened, a lot of crazy stuff started happening in our house. Oh, poltergeist, huh? Oh, it was nuts. Like, I remember one time, um, so we used to sleep in the floor. We lived in a trailer. And we, me and my three little brothers, we used, to, we used to sleep in the floor. And the living room floor. And so I remember sleeping in the living room floor. And then, like, all of a sudden, you just heard the freaking trailer start, like, shaking. It sounded like someone was just running down the freaking... Um, the hallways just pounding on the walls knocking stuff off the walls ran through the kitchen like knocking stuff off went through my parents bedroom door which is on the other side of the kitchen like the main bedroom of the, of the house mm -hmm. busted through that door and then went and slammed the door open into their um bathroom so my dad got up because he thought it was like my brother being drunk or something our older brother and he got up all pissed and he opened a door and he's like what the f you know getting ready to yell at my brother and no one's there and um, we started seeing, like, some spirits at our house. There was a little girl. Like, so when you look out of the bathroom window, my parents' bathroom window, there was, like, a little girl that would sit right in the middle of the yard underneath the tree, and she would be, like, she had was, like, picking, picking flowers. And then we had a big garden, and just so happened, I don't know if it's just a coincidence or what, but in that big garden, we would see somebody, like, hoeing the, the ground. And when you would watch out the window, it would stop and look over at the window and then go back and start hoeing the ground again. And then um, in the little ditch area where my dad had dug down and hit that freaking rock or whatever, there was a little boy that would run back and forth up and down the ditch. And wow. then um, so the really bad stuff would happen in the house. And my dad, I guess, he went to a, one of the Native American, they have like, a, I don't know what you call them, not reservations, but I mean, I guess there would be a reservation, I don't know. But he went to one of these uh, people and he's like, hey, this is what I found, this is what's going on, you know, I cracked this on accident digging. And they're like, well, this is what you did, you released the spirit of a warrior by a lot of time on stuff, and I'm like... Oh, I was little. Lord. Yeah, yeah, I was little. A warrior, huh? Yeah, like as uh -oh. and as it, he said, you need to put it together as best as you can and put it back on top of the grave and bury it back up. And was hope it a it, grave? Well, what's okay? And this is the honest truth. So my dad dug up a skeleton. Oh, right. It wasn't a full. It wasn't a full. Yes, and it wasn't a full skeleton. Cops came and everything, took the skeleton, put it in their car. I never heard nothing about it again. My dad said, oh, they said it was a um, fake skeleton, someone had buried. I think he said that just to not freak us out. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But that's what happened. They came, put the, put the skeleton in the cop car, left with it. We asked him about it a little bit later down the road, and he was like, oh, it was, it was a fake skeleton someone had put out there. That's 100% true. Wow. And so he's, we put that on there, and after we did that, stuff kind of subsided a little bit. Um, but I've seen things a lot in my life, and, I, and that's why I try to put everything together, you know, because spirits, like your spirit, your soul, whatever it may be, you know, I think you just level up and go to different dimensions and you go to the next plane, whatever it is, mm -hmm. you know. But then I'm like, okay, I know I've seen ghosts, so what are those? Well, because those are those are earthbound spirits, a lot of them. And uh, I have a really good friend of mine. His name's Barry Littleton. If you guys uh, want, if you've got some time, go to his YouTube channel, Barry Littleton. Okay, on YouTube, and he he talks about uh, earthbound spirits being stuck here, and there's more than there have ever been in the history of the universe right now, uh, because there's so many souls that are are so stuck. To this planet and to earthly things like money, property, people, stuff like that. They're they're not they're not they're not ready to cross over and they're just sitting around waiting to hop on newborn babies and stuff to like take over yeah. their souls, take over their bodies. That's gonna be uh, me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't let it be you. You don't no. want it to be you. No. Uh, because people um 
I don't, I, I don't know if people have lost, so many souls have lost touch with like our spiritual spirituality mm -hmm. and uh, what's next. I mean, people are taught now, like don't go towards the light, you know, when you right. die, you want to go towards the light. <laughs> okay. Probably. Yeah. I would, I would run towards that light if I were you. Okay. I know I will. <laughs> yeah. And then oh, you hear stories of people who have passed and come back. You yeah. Know. The near death experiences. And yeah. well, he, well, that Barry's had two near death experiences where he oh. died. And so that's, uh, he's got a lot of experience with that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You know, it's, um, I think that, and that's my whole thing. I try to put together all the stuff I've heard from different people. And what I feel myself and what I've known myself. And I'm like, man, I'm trying to put it all together and intertwine it and make something make sense. And maybe I come up with a theory and put it all together and write it down and come on here and talk about it one day. But like, like I said, some of the things you have said tonight have confirmed some things that like I already believed in myself and I didn't know from your aspect of it, you know, and that's a different point of view. And, uh, it, it's just one more notch I add to the stuff that I'm learning. And yeah, there's a, so many questions. I don't understand how people can be bored in life. You know, I know some people who are like, you know, atheists or agnostics or whatever. And they think you just die and you're done and you're just a meat suit and you run away and go. And I'm like, man, what a boring way to think about it. You know, yeah. there's just so mm -hmm. much more to it. I mean, I, I believe in reincarnation. I feel I feel like I've been here many, 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 many yes, times. Yes, hundred percent. And and that's why we have a lot of interest this lifetime. I mean, things that you're interested in. It's probably because you've done that in past lifetimes. Things you're good at, the talents you have. Yeah. Uh, any kind of hobbies that you like to do. I mean, this is probably stuff that you've done for lifetimes. Yeah, the okay? stuff you're drawn the things to. Things you're best at. Yeah. Yeah. And this must be my first go around. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, well, like, I ain't good at nothing. <laughs> oh, you're you're good. Don't don't you lie. Well, you don't uh, have to be good at it. You just you just, you just you like gotta like it, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. See, for me, it's uh, it's all about the ghost stories. I I absolutely love the ghost stories. I could listen to those all night. You know, I tell people all the time. You know, I, people walk up to me and they want to talk to me about, oh, you know, the weather. Or, or their car, or, you know, oh, you know what they're building down there, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, all right. <laughs> but the first time they mention ghost, it's a three-hour conversation. <laughs> I'm like, oh, well, you know, you could do this, and this is why this happens, and blah, blah, blah. I, yeah. It's just I'm fascinated with it. I always have been ever since I was a little kid. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you guys can only imagine. I, I don't have a whole lot of boring conversations anymore now that right. I'm out of the closet with the Bigfoot research. So people people like to talk to me about Bigfoot a lot. Yeah. Now, so. Yeah. yeah. Oh, did I ask it's, you? Did I ask yeah. you if you seen uh if you watched uh, Willow Creek? I don't think so. No, I. I have you seen that? Willow Creek? No, yeah. I haven't. Um. So, um, Bobcat Goldwaith. He's he wrote that and directed that movie. Oh yeah. And they said it's like it a really freaking good Bigfoot movie because he's big in the Bigfoot. Yeah, it's decent. Really? He's yeah. Bobcat Goldwith is very very big in the Bigfoot. Like he really believes it. I don't know if you knew that or not, but like, uh, should, is he still alive? Yes. Yeah. 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 I should invite him on my show then. <laughs> oh, 100 percent. You should. He would 100 percent. And he he would probably do it. He's I awesome. Mean, he's like, not doing a whole lot. I apologize lot right for now. asking if he's still alive. I'm I'm sorry. Well, you don't know. No. Yeah, I mean, if you don't know, you don't know. <laughs> Yeah. Well, he was on Joe Rogan's podcast um, a few years back, um, yeah. and this was like right after, um, or not right after, but it was after um, Robin Williams had died, and him and Rob, Robin Williams were like brothers. Oh. I didn't know this, but I guess they were like super tight, super close, mm -hmm. and um, he was on her telling stories about that, but they, they got in, into talking about Bigfoot and stuff, because evidently he's very, very, very big into it goes to conventions and things like that, you know, and he tells, he's telling Joe Rogan, he's like, look, I've talked to people who say they have seen things and I believe them. And, you know, some people are crazy, you know, they make up things that aren't true, but I think that this muddies the water. But a lot of people, 
you just got to trust your bullshit meter really it's right. what it, what oh, it comes yeah. out to be you know if something's too good to be true it's usually too good to be fucking true you know and when people try to say things sometimes i'm like look now i know you're lying you're telling me the truth at first now you're <laughs> indulging in the story don't make anything up just tell me what actually happened right you know but uh, yeah you he's have to really be discerning especially when it comes to paranormal research and stuff like that Yes. Yeah. You know, and we, you know, I try to teach my kids that too. Look, always tell the truth, no matter what. It may hurt, but, you know, I'm going to be more pissed if you lie to me and I find out later. I'm like, if you come to me and tell me the truth off the bat, I might be mad, but not as mad if you lied to me and I find out the truth later. You know, always tell me the truth. That, and that's another thing too, though. But that's just so they can always know they can trust me and talk to me about anything. You know, I, I don't care what it is. You always come to me. I'll always you know, help you out the best that I can, you know, but yeah, you should check Ted out. If you haven't seen that Willow Creek's supposed to be really good. It's like yeah. a kind of a found footage one. Um, but, uh, Bobcat's really, he's actually a really, really good interview too. Like the, all the interviews I've heard from him, he's really awesome. So nice. if you can get in touch with that dude, that'd be awesome. He doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't actually talk like he used to in the movies. Yeah. Really? <laughs> he hates that by the way. Yeah. I bet really? he does. Yes. So yes. That, was a, that was an act. That was his shtick. Yeah. He hates, uh, well, yeah, he hates, and he hates people talking about it. Right. <laughs> like he doesn't want to go back into yeah. it, you know, because he's, he's actually really big into the researching Bigfoot and things like that. So, wow. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm definitely going to look him up probably yeah. tonight. For oh, sure. Yeah. You should check out Willow Creek for sure. I will. Yeah. It's a uh, interesting things, you know, I can't believe I never heard of it before. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I come across things. I listen to so many different people talk about stuff. And in my mind, that's what my wife said. She's like, your mind is just full of shit that I don't understand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she's like, uh, she's like, you can't tell me what you ate for lunch, but you can tell me, you can sing any song ever made from anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> like, cause I just, I love music. Music sticks in my head. And I literally, I'll be singing something. She's like, how do you know this song? <laughs> like, I, I, I don't know. I hear something. Well, honey, sticks. I'm really into Britney Spears. Yes. <laughs> oh, baby, baby. <laughs> See, there he goes. There he goes. You know, I, that just brought a, a, a memory I have of a show I did on the Mandela Effect. I was going to oh! say, that's so yeah. funny. I was going to ask. Really? I was yes. going to bring it. About the skirt? Yes. It was never black. It's black. It's black. It, it was, was never plaid. It was plaid. I swear to God, that skirt was plaid. Yeah. But it was so. black. It was, it was, that was so, look right, I it? was going to bring that up. I literally was just going to say that, but you're like, that brings up. It's all lip at the, I'm just kidding. That's hilarious. <laughs> well, There's a lot of stuff deal. out there. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of stuff I, out there. Mandela effect. There is. I actually remote viewed one incident of a Mandela effect. Okay. I did a whole show on the Mandela effect, but I remote viewed one because it really was irritating me. Uh, here in Georgia, we have Chick-fil-A. Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. And, We've uh, got a few of them around here. Well, I mean, one day I was riding by, and the, the daggum sign said Chick Fil A, C H I C K, fillet. Yeah. It was not that way. Like a week before, it was C H I K fillet. I I remember it. I I have a degree in English literature, okay, and I am really big on spelling and, and getting crafty mm -hmm. with the way you spell things and logos. And I always thought, man, I like that C H I K Chick Fil A. That's cool. A lot of people remember it C H I C filet okay but not now it's chick-fil-a with a c-h-i-c-k it never it never was any different but i swear to god whatever <laughs> c-h-i-k yeah that's hilarious so i looked into it and let me tell you my data was really interesting because it was uh it had something to do with uh cern actually oh wow yeah. okay it, was, it had something to do with cern with the hydrogen collider uh, being turned on, and uh, we just moved. We we time jumped. We went over to another dimension. We just kind of boop. Yeah. Went into another one. Yeah. Yeah, I love this shit. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> it is. Do, that's yeah. that's what the that's what part of the CERN and everything is like. That's mm -hmm. part of the purpose of it is to change us over to another dimension to move us over, up or down. Okay. Hopefully, they uh, make us better. Yeah. Well, and that's what that project Looking Glass is. Uh, two, uh, they're they're using that technology 
to see like, well, let's turn CERN on and you know, this, this timeline's not gonna work out in our favor. So let's turn CERN on and let's put us in another timeline. Let's put it, let's put humanity in a different timeline. You gotta finish watching Stranger Things. You're gonna like it. <laughs> yeah. I, will. I actually did watch part of the second season, but it got a little weird. So yeah, I, uh, well, it, you know, it is it weird. Was, but. I like the first season the best, so mm -hmm. yeah. It gets pretty cool too though. I mean, the, the last season was awesome, I yeah. thought. I yeah, thought I thought it was really good it. too. Yeah. 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 But um definitely gotta check out Willow Creek. And I just check out it on my hands, so yeah, I'll be doing that. <laughs> check out check out check out Bobcat, man. He's he's pretty yeah. awesome. Pretty interesting guy, you know. So oh, yeah. but uh we'll sit here and talk forever if we don't <laughs> we don't do something there. <laughs> no, man, this is awesome. It was yeah. awesome talking yeah. to you for real. And yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. if you ever want to come on and talk about something, you know, whatever, whatever else it may be, um, All right. paranormal stuff or something different than what you always talk about. You know, sometimes I people mean, get tired of talking about the same thing, but. Oh, I never get tired of talking about stuff. I mean, and I've, I switch it up. You know, I, I usually do talk a lot about uh, Sasquatch. Uh, mm -hmm. research and things like that. Last night I had a, a ghost hunter from South Florida on my show and, uh, and what did I have before? I mean, it, it's something different. You know, I had a guy from Tennessee that's a monster hunter who uh, goes after Cherokee legends of folklore, like Spearfinger the Witch and, yeah. uh, they, you know, and the Judicola the Giant, um, the Cherokee Devil. So um, it's never boring. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. It's a lot well, of fun. But I would love to, to hang out. Maybe I'll bring you guys if you guys want. Y'all come on Space Talk Radio with me sometime. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you said Friday nights, right? Saturday and Sunday nights. Saturday and Sunday. Space Talk Radio. Well, I'm yeah. off okay. on the weekends now, so yeah, yeah. Well, we y'all come. That. On. I'll schedule y'all in. Yeah, yeah well, for sure. We'll we'll keep in contact for sure, I would and love that. you know, vice versa. Okay. You know, if you want to come yeah. on, we'll talk talking about whatever. So, <laughs> awesome. Why don't you go ahead and it's been awesome talking to you, of course. Thank you. We had this problem that we'll we'll talk forever. We'll talk forever, yeah. and five hours later, we're like, we got to go to bed. But anyways, <laughs> let everybody else uh, know again where they can find you at and all your stuff. Okay. Well, you can find me. I, I, it's really easy. Just go to the cryptidhuntress dot com. Uh, that's my website. It's got all my information on there, all my social media, all my shows, and everything. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, The Cryptid Huntress. Uh, I have a show on Friday nights with the guys from Texas Front Porch called Remote Viewing Investigations with Jessica Jones. And, uh, and that's really fun at 9, 9 p.m. Eastern uh, Fridays. And on Saturday and Sundays, I'm on Spaced Out Radio with my show Off the Trails. It's mostly about Sasquatch, Dogman, ghosts, portals, all that fun stuff. And that's uh, 10 p.m. Saturday, Sunday nights, Eastern. Time. Awesome. So, yeah. Absolutely. That's where you can awesome. Find me. Yeah. Sweet, guys. Well, go. Go check her out. Absolutely. Her make sure you, she does some killer shows. Make sure you support her. And um, guys, we love you, horror fam, as always. Thank you for support, as always, you know. But more importantly, until next time, keep, keep it creepy. creepy.